Cleveland's been the best fourth quarter team in terms of point differential in the league this year. What did you make of the way that you guys just kind of uh, blew them out of the water in that fourth? Uh, I thought it was a continuation of the third. I thought um, everybody in the second half gave us great minutes, uh, every group. Um, I thought the defense in the third and fourth quarter was really, really good. Uh, and I thought the group that started the fourth, um, that was a critical stretch of the game. Um, because they they you know they were throwing haymakers in terms of the lineups they were putting out there, um, and I thought that group was just that that really stabilized the game, built a nice lead for us, uh, and then the closing group did a really good job defensively, especially. You platooned J. Will and Muscala against their big front line. Um, what did you think they did tonight to really try to kind of hold their own? Those guys were big time, and uh, you know we've obviously played small at the five a lot. Uh, but the rebounding, Jalen Williams from Arkansas is a really good rebounder. I thought he had some critical rebounds in there and fought those guys really well. Uh, and we did a good, pretty good job on the glass, all things considered. Uh, and then keeping our bigs in coverage tonight was more of a priority rather than switching. We just thought we were going to be a little too vulnerable by going small and switching. And, you know, it's just a credit to Mike and Jalen for their ability to just kind of adapt to that, um, you know, and give us those quality minutes. Those guys were big time tonight. There was a stretch of like four consecutive plays that Kenrich just seemed to overwhelm them with his energy. Uh, what's your reaction as you're watching that unfold? Not surprised. You know, he's just, he's a, he's a warrior. Um, you know, so same stuff I've always said, you know, rings true. That's just who he is. So, you know, when you turn the scoreboard on, that's what he's going to do. I was also going to ask about Kinrich, but Wiggins was another guy that, that did some of those same things that looked like in the fourth quarter, J-Dub was big. Can you just go into more detail on those like non shea minutes in the fourth that, that really kind of built the lead? Yeah, I mean, they, uh, they, they do a pretty good job of Cleveland uh, moving their rotations around. They're a little unpredictable in the first half. Um, the beginning of the second quarter, they had uh, Allen, Mobley, and Garland all out there. Uh, which was surprising, and so um, you know we we knew that was going to be a critical stretch of the game, end of the third, start of the fourth, uh, where they were going to have really quality lineups, and uh, those guys did a really good job. It started with defense, but just like toughness plays, um, loose balls on the glass, uh, great physicality tonight by our team. Uh, you know you can't beat a team like that unless you're super physical, and those guys brought the juice there. Shea was really hot to start this game against the defense that good. What's it like just having a guy like him that even when things break down a little bit, they can play him perfectly and he can still get a bucket? Uh, luxury. You know, it's a luxury. And, you know, he's still growing, I think. Um, that's the value is, like, you get stuck and he can just go make a play. Um, he's still learning how to leverage uh, that gravity at the beginning of possessions. I thought he had some really, really good moments tonight with that. Uh, and then he gets other ones where he just gets geared up and he's trying to go. But, um you know, it's exciting to have a player like that, and it's exciting to have a player that's got more runway. You know, like he's not a finished product by any stretch of the imagination. He's got things he needs to improve at, just like everybody on the team. Lineup to start the fourth was a little unconventional from what you guys have been doing all season. Having those guys haven't played a second together on the court. Um, was there something you wanted to see from them that gave you guys a, the boost that you needed to uh, push ahead? So was there something specifically that you want to see from them? Uh, I mean, like I said, you know, they're not a team, at least tonight they weren't, that, you know, is throwing a, a true second unit out there. Um, and they, so they really stacked um, – what would traditionally be second unit minutes, they stacked with their starters. They played those guys a lot of minutes, and they played them in the middle of the quarters or the middle of the halves. Um, and so once we sniffed that out in the first half, you know, we at a lot of our halftime stuff was talking about how we wanted to manage end of the third, beginning of the fourth, and I thought both groups did a great job. And then Aaron came in and did, was great on defensive end. He got matched up with Mobley a little bit and did a good job on him. Can you just talk about the effort he gave on defensive end? Uh, same effort he always gives. You know, that's the the thing. You, know, you guys talk about K. Rich and him, Muscala. Jalen Williams is cut from this cloth from Arkansas. You know, this guy's readiness is, is high level. And, um, you know, we do a lot of talking about professionalism and that being a priority. But when you've got players that walk the walk like that, it brings it to life. It's a powerful signal, and it's something that you can't take for granted. And Aaron is, is a true professional in terms of his readiness and how he competes every night. Andrew Schlecht of The Athletic. 
You're now 8-0 and when you start Aaron Wiggins. you have any commentary on that? Yeah, just going to keep doing it forever, <laughs> and, you know, just predicting an undefeated run. I mean, we start him when we think it's the best thing for the team, you know, I, but it speaks to his readiness, you know, because forget about the record. Um, every time we start him or every time, you know, I thought the other night I wasn't really planning on playing him very much against, uh, who do we just play? Atlanta. Uh, and he does this, you know, it's the same thing. It's just like whatever situation you put him in, he's ready. That's when I talk about professionalism. That's what I'm talking about. And then Usman Jang's getting some developmental minutes here and there. Your thoughts on the way he played? Um, it's not time to evaluate, like, the, the play yet, you know, and I think the reason for that is because if you look at the way he was playing in his final stretch with us before he got hurt and then in the stretch with the blue uh, right after that, the, the assignment – um, he was playing at like a ridiculously high level, you know, a really exciting level. And that's, you know, that's clearly in him, you know. And so right now he's coming off of a long-term injury in his rookie year. Um, you know, he's, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get back to that level, but he's going to get back to that level because he's clearly shown that he's got that ability and he'll probably surpass that level at some point. So um, we've got to stay with him and, you know, stay to the process on that. And, um, you know, we're certainly really excited about him. That's why we're, we're throwing him out there. Last one for the coach here. Cleveland plays at the slowest pace in the league. You all obviously stress the opposite end of that. What did you think tonight of the, the pace of play? Pretty good. You know, I thought um, much better than the first time we played them. Um, we started the game pretty well there. I thought we were good up the floor. When we got stops and rebounds, we were able to get out and run. Uh, and then in the half court, I thought we generated good pace with our, you know, when we came together for screens and stuff like that. I thought the guys played with great force. Like I said, the physicality tonight, you're, you're not beating a team like that the way that we did unless you're physical. And I thought we were physical on both ends. Kenrich, can you... You gave the team such a boost there in the fourth quarter. Can you sort of talk us through that and just the the mindset to to win those fourth quarter minutes? Yeah, uh, just pretty much just wanted to come out and give us a spark. Uh, I know we needed something uh, both on both sides of the ball, uh, and, I, and I figured just go out there and just do what I do, play hard, um, try to apply pressure, and, and hopefully it's contagious. And it was so. What did you think of uh, Mark being kind of right on the spot, calling that timeout and, and challenging that foul on Mobley? Uh, I wasn't I wasn't for it at first, I, I, at first because I, I feel uh, I feel different, I feel otherwise. But uh, man, it was successful, and, and uh, I think that was a, that was kind of a game changer for us. Uh, it was a momentum shift for us uh, for the game. Aaron Wiggins is talked about kind of looking to you as um, a, a great example not just of you know play style but just professionalism everything like that what's it like for you to see a guy like him really in his second year um, understanding himself on the floor and, and how he can impact winning I mean it's great man it's great to see um, that I can help out some uh, somebody like Wiggs uh, I, 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 let, I let him know all the time that uh, in, in my second year he he He's much more advanced than, than I was in my second year, just as far as uh, IQ and knowing how to play off guys. Uh, so that's a huge advantage for him, and uh, I'm, I'm super proud of him. Uh, me and John was just talking about how, how we're 8-0 when, when he starts, so uh, man, he must be doing something right. And then um, so how about uh, Shea tonight continuing? I mean, he does this every night, but... Um, Getting to the spots that he needs to get to, and just kind of keeping that that scoreboard chugging along the way that he did. Yeah, man, uh, he, he's a superstar in the making. Um, I, am I, no, he's he's a superstar in my eyes. Uh, uh, we trust him down the stretch. We trust him. I mean, throughout the whole game, but especially in the fourth. Uh, you know, he 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 carries a load for us, and uh, super super happy to be be on on Shay's team. Andrew selected the athletic. Mark had you in at center in the fourth quarter with Allen and Mobley in there. Yeah. Does that get you excited at all to like like get you juiced up to to play against like such a big lineup, like one of the bigger lineups in the league? I wouldn't say excited, but but uh, man, I'm ready to go. Whoever uh, whoever it is, pretty much, man. It could be the tallest tallest guys, the biggest guys, or the, the smallest guys. I'm just ready to go whenever my number's called. 
and uh, man, pretty much just want to go out there and compete and do it, do it for my team. And then the crowd got into it in the fourth quarter. These are the crowds that seem to be getting a little bigger as the season goes along. Yeah. Um, what has that been like for you guys as a group? It's been great, man. Uh, the fans have been incredible uh, all year long in my eyes. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, us winning games, uh, it, we're going to draw more attention. Uh, we know that. And, uh, you know, the more people we have here, I think it's the better because uh, we have the best fans in the league. So, uh, Super, super advantage for us. <clears throat> Michael Martin, the Oklahoma. Kenner, do you continue to find different ways to impact the game and just make winning play after winning play? Obviously, this is nothing new to you. You have the nickname Kenny Hustle, but I just wanted to ask, when did this start for you playing this certain way? Was it a parent in your ear, a coach, or anything like that? Uh, pretty much when I was younger. Uh, just playing, playing uh, in my hometown in Waco. Got to got to play hard. Uh, if you didn't play hard uh, in my hometown at my high school, you you pretty much wasn't gonna play. So uh, that's kind of instilled instilled in me at, at an early age, and it just carried on, you know, throughout junior college, throughout uh, my time at TCU and, and, and my time here in the league. So it's just something I carried along and just kind of play with, with that chip on my shoulder. Last on the day, back. Yeah, you were part of that lineup in the start of the fourth when, with a uh, little unconventional for you guys, for what you guys have been doing all year. You guys haven't played a second on the court together. So what was the key to, to getting the stops you needed and giving you guys the boost? Uh, pretty much trust each other. Uh, that's the main thing. I think in the fourth, we, we really shared the ball uh, uh, better than we did the whole game. We took care of the ball in the fourth. And uh, we had a, a scrappy bunch out there, uh, a, a group we all could switch uh, on the ball, um, and, and, and a, a lot of guys that know how to play the game, uh, kind of some vet, vets, especially Mike. Um, uh, so just super, I mean, super tight. Uh, we trusted the game plan in the fourth. Uh, coach kind of got us riled up, and uh, man, we, we we went and took it. Is it tough to? <clears throat> play in a group where you – I know you guys have practiced before together, but is it tough to play in live situations when you haven't played with those guys on the floor? No, it's not tough at all because we – I mean, uh, we practice how we play. So um, with all those guys, like we've all played together in practice. Um, and, you know, how you practice is, is how you play. So it kind of translates to the game. And uh, man, it's super com – I'm comfortable playing with whoever. And I, I think the guys feel the same way. Uh, Josh, that coming in, they had the best point differential in the fourth quarter in the NBA, and you guys outscore them by a dozen. Um, just your thoughts on um, what it took down the stretch uh, to come away with a victory like this? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, low scoring game. I think defensively, we were locked in. Uh, we executed what we wanted to. Um, that we spoke about, you know, prior to the game. I think we we knew they were the best defense in the league. Obviously, got a lot of length in the front court. Um, you know, we, we knew getting stuff at the rim wasn't going to be easy. So. Guys made the right plays. You know, we kicked out. We, we hit some big threes. Um, Ken Rich was massive for us in that fourth. Uh, we defended well. So we did a lot of really good things down the stretch there. Um, and that's a really good team. So I think the way we closed that game out, um, you know, shows we're trending in the right direction. And um, this was a big win for us. What impact do you think you had on amplifying the tempo and the pace, particularly in that second half? It seemed like you were out and running um, almost every opportunity you got. Yeah, I mean, we are getting stops, so that, that allows our offense to get going. Um, I think when we got five guys on the floor that you know can ma handle the ball, make plays, um, it's a luxury. And I think the more we take advantage of that, the better we're going to be. And um, I was just trying to get the tempo going, um, trying to push the pace and transition. Um, you know, whether it was for myself or for teammates, um, and we're getting good looks. So just trying to stay with that. Uh, we built a good lead um, early in that fourth, and I think um, you know pushing the pace was a part of that. But um, I think when we got set in the half court, we executed. Uh, we got stops down the other end. So both sides of the ball, uh, I think you know in that last 12 minutes were really good. And then uh, Jay Will, Mike, those guys kind of held down the fort for you against their huge front line. Um, just what did you think of the job they did tonight? They were big. Uh, I think, I don't know the numbers, but it felt like we rebounded the ball all right out there. 
Um, they didn't kill us on the on the glass, I don't think. But uh, Mike J. Will was, was huge. Um, I mean, Mobley and Al Nellon are a handful down there to handle both sides of the ball. Um, they were great. You know, Mike did a good job of stretching uh, their bigs out to, you know, remove shot blockers from the paint. Um, defensively, I thought, you know, J. Will was great. Uh, being physical, uh, Mike the same. And, and those two bring it every night, regardless who we're playing. So uh, big effort from those guys. But I think collectively, defensively, um, we were really locked in tonight. Josh, playing against a team like this that's so um, kind of a rarity these days with, with the size in the front court, does it take guards like yourself a minute to sort of calibrate and get used to that amount of length? It does. I mean, because when you get inside and you think you have a layup, um, those guys, they, they, they come off their man a lot and try block shots. So um, that's why I think we sprayed out, shot a lot of threes, um, and got a lot of good looks because we knew uh, when we drove, uh, you know, we scouted it that when you go to drive, Mobley, Allen, they're going to leave their guy, come try and block shots. So just be aware of that. Um, and I don't think we got too many shots blocked tonight. We were pretty switched on with that. Um, but obviously you have to kind of keep that in the back of your mind that when you're going up, um, one of those guys is going to be around and um, they are long and they're, you know, elite rim protectors. So you just got to be aware of that. But I thought for the most part we were. Um, we got a lot of good looks. You've talked a lot about how much you love playing with Kenrich. Just can, can you describe the amount of – I guess, energy that he brings you, especially in that fourth quarter tonight? Yeah, huge. Um, I mean, regardless of how he's playing or what he's doing, um, you know, you know, you can count on K-Rich for, for energy and, and to lift the tempo. And um, you saw he, he picked up um, Neto full court. He got a foul, but it just, you know, it, it shows the team. Um, this is how we need to play, and, and he's the guy for that. And uh, he's a leader. He does it by example. Uh, guys follow his lead. So he was huge for us, made some big shots, uh, you know, big offensive rebounds, got stops defensively. So, um, you know, he was massive for us. And when he's playing like that, um, as I said, it, it's a flow on effect. Guys want to, you know, have that energy, bring that um, same effort that he does. And, um, you know, he got the job done for us tonight. There's been a ton of buzz around this team, whether it's more national attention or bigger crowds like tonight. Do you or the team feel that? I mean, you definitely feel it when the crowd's packed like it was tonight. Um, they were into the game. And I think, you know, as a young team, it's easy to get ahead of yourselves. Uh, you know, we've been playing good, you know, the last month or whatever, beat some good teams. But um, there's still such a long way to go in the season. Um, so just taking it one day at a time. Uh, I think the best part about our group is, you know, however the result goes the night before, we come in the next day uh, with the same environment. Um, everyone's, you know, energized, ready to go. And, uh, you know, you, you leave the past in the past and, and move on to the next. So, um you can't, you know, you can't get too high on some good wins um, because there's going to be losses where you don't want to get too low on. So finding that middle ground, um, this group's done a really good job at. And, you know, the coaches kind of preach, um, you know, a, a next you know, game mentality. Um, and the guys have done a really good job, you know, executing that. Yeah, it seems like when you're getting to the rim, it seems like you're trying to use your length a little bit more. Is that Has that been an emphasis more lately? No, it has. I mean... Just, you know, especially tonight, it was a bit different, um, just knowing those guys were there. But um, trying to get downhill, uh, I mean, trying to finish on the front of the rim instead of settling for, you know, contested floaters, uh, which is not, you know, an overly high percentage shot. Um, trying to, you know, make more efficient, take more efficient shots. Um, and uh, whether that's get downhill and spray it out or finish myself, um, just making the right read. Right, right. Uh, Josh, pregame, whenever you're warming up, uh, af after you were done, Jay will kind of challenge you to do a two foot, two hand dunk. Mm -hmm. Does he often do that? Do you not believe you could pull it off? Like, what nah. was that about? Well, we kind of joke because I've never actually had a two foot dunk in a game in my life. Um, so he didn't, none of the guys really believed I could dunk off two feet. So uh, I just had to show him uh, that I can. But um, I need to get one in a game sometime soon. Valley Sports. Um, Shay, Cleveland came in as uh, the best fourth quarter team just in terms of point differential. What did you think about the way that you all played really from start to finish in that final frame and um, outscoring by a dozen? Yeah, um, we were good. Um, we got stops when we were rebounding in that fourth quarter. Um, that really allowed us to, to stretch the lead and then we're also playing with the pass offensively. Uh, what's going through your mind as you see Kenridge kind of make that series of four straight plays that mm -hmm. seem to kind of overwhelm them. Yeah, um, I always say this, like, K-Rich is always ready for the moment um, and always willing to do whatever it takes. Um, I think he had, like, zero points before the third, the fourth quarter of the night. Um, it's just a testament to, to his hard work and his mental and, and him staying ready. And then you know, they have a massive front line. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on the way that Mike and and Ken, or sorry, Mike and, and Jay Will um, kind of battled them down low. Yeah, um, we needed to, um, and we needed them to um, all night. Obviously, they're big. Um, I think both of them are like seven foot, um, and both of those guys get energy off offensive rebounds and stuff like that. Um, 
and, and Mike and, and Jay Will kind of neutralizing them, especially the second half. Um, on the glass really helped helped us get on transition and really helped us get stops. Well, Shay, what, what's your mindset? Or do you change anything that, that you do when you go against a team that has that much size at the rim? Um, n- nah, no matter like no matter what, I try to make the right basketball play. Um, now, if it's a smaller guy, I know I can like score over top of him. I'm going to. Um, but if one if one guy's guarding me, another guy comes to me. One guy's open, um, and, and I make a pass. You guys are eight zero when Aaron Wiggins starts. Hmm. What, what, what do you make of that stat? It's a very impressive stat. <laughs> um, if I was Wiggs, I would use it a lot more. You've always had that mid-range jumper in your arsenal, but you've been especially relying on it this year. I think you're making the second most shots from 10 to 14 feet in the entire league. Is that something that you really worked on this offseason or honed in on at all? Um, I did I did work on it a lot this offseason. Um, but I, I just tried to exploit um, teams' defenses, kind of get to a sweet spot. Um, and, like, the NBA likes to... Every team likes to say like they lay like threes and layups, um, and an inefficient shot is the in between. Um, and teams are willing to give that up. So I try to be good at shots they're willing to give up. Michael Martin, the Oklahoman, you were really in a zone tonight, hitting a lot of shots. It felt like almost any shot you put up was going to go in, whether it was double team, triple team, or anything like that. Uh, but at the end of the game, most guys, when they get hot like you were, tend to take a lot of those shots and not trust their teammates. You trusted your teammates and hit J-Dub on some big shots. I just wanted to ask you about your trust and confidence level in a lot of your teammates out on the floor late in games. Yeah, um, it just goes back to what I'm saying about making the right basketball play. Um, if teams double me, um, throw two guys at me, someone's open. Um, and this team, got players on this team work really hard. Um, and you guys are seeing it. You guys are seeing guys step up in big moments and make shots um, and make big plays. Um, and that's the only way we're going to be the team that we want to be is if we trust each other and, and make plays for each other. And following up on that, um, just staying with J-Dub, how do you feel about him uh, translating a lot of your Instagram captions? <laughs> yeah, he's got to stop doing that. He's got to stop doing that. Uh, Andrew Select of The Athletic, all-star starters were named mm-hmm. uh, last night. Is that something that you're paying attention to? Um, I, w- I wasn't really. Now, obviously, like my friends and my family and the social media brought it to my attention. Sure. Um, but yeah, I wasn't like too focused on it. I'm not mad that I'm not starting or anything like that. Yeah. And then you threw the ball through Karis LeVert's legs, like two minutes off in the fourth, uh, to the corner to Jalen Williams. It seems like you've been doing that a little bit more lately. Is that, is that something that you're looking for? Or is it just like what you see out on the court? Yeah, I don't know why it's happening. I really don't know. Um, I guess I'm getting into a habit of doing it. Um, hopefully it keeps resulting in good baskets and not turnovers. And then at, after the game, there was a kind of a crowd around Diakite, <laughs> uh, who was on the team. Mm-hmm. Can you share like anything about your relationship with him or maybe the conversation? Yeah, he, um, we're just like catching up. Um, he's a super funny guy, hilarious if you know him. Always has like a great positive attitude. Um, and we just won, so we were in a good mood. Um, so we just we're going back and forth.